2024 summer movie season is upon us and in today's video I'm going to be talking about my top 10 most anticipated films for this summer season. I definitely want to hear your guys thoughts down below in the comment section because I always forget or miss a couple movies that you guys happen to mention and I definitely also want to make sure and remind you guys to hit that like and subscribe button because I provide movie content every single day so if you're new and you're a movie fanatic this is definitely the channel for you guys now I know some people might be wondering well 10 is really hard to narrow down specifically when you get down to the indie films and some of the smaller stuff so with that said I will also be doing a companion video for this over on my YouTube memberships if you join down below you can find that video on my channel just for you guys where I I will be talking about 10 more films that I'm also excited about for this summer. Make sure again to go join, see what perks you can get. It all supports and goes back into this channel to give you guys more awesome content. But with all that said, let's get into my top 10 most anticipated films for the summer movie season. Kicking off at my number 10 might be a little bit higher for some of you, but it is one of the final films this summer that we'll be getting, and that is Alien Romulus, directed by Fetty Alvarez, starring Kaylee Spaney, an actress who I think has just been doing an incredible job in Hollywood so far with like Civil War and Priscilla, and I can't wait to see her in this movie. But Alien Romulus is one of those movies that we don't know much about yet. We know who's in it. We know who's directing it. We know it's R-rated. We know it's going to be in theaters. And we've seen the teaser trailer, which was awesome. And that's about it. And that excites me to no end. Now, as a little bit of background context, I'm not usually the biggest Alien fan. I didn't grow up with the Alien franchise. I have a very weird ranking that I'm not going to share here. But when the new film comes out, I'm definitely going to rewatch them all and then re-rank them all. But Alien Romulus is one that it's hard for me not to get excited about because it's, again, Fetty Alvarez, who did an incredible job with Don't Breathe and the remake of The Evil Dead. And if he's tackling the Alien franchise now and he's done an incredible job with another horror franchise already, which I beloved, I can't imagine what he's going to be able to do with the Alien franchise as well. Brings me into my number nine, another horror film titled A Quiet Place Day One. Now, I have loved the Quiet Place franchise so far. I loved one. I love two even more. And Day One, I haven't seen a single trailer for. I'll just put it right out there. I don't want to see anything for this film because I expect this film to be only like an hour and a half like the other two. But you have like Lupita Nyong'o and Joseph Quinn starring in, the, in the, as the main characters in here. The way that they pitch this film is that it's basically what if the aliens attacked on day one in the loudest city in the world, New York City. And that intrigues me. That excites me to see what you're going to be able to do with the Quiet Place franchise in a different location, in a different scenario, in a different setting. And I love that. I also love that Hansu's coming back as well because we got a little bit of him in the second film. So it's going to be great to kind of expand on this character because I remember being pissed at the second one when he died. I was like, why was he even in this? It's a great exploration. And again, so far what the Quiet Place franchise has done such a great job with is providing scares, but at the same time telling a deeply moving story about a family. And if day one can provide again the scares the thrills making you want to be quiet in the movie theaters because how many times have we gone after COVID and it's just like people forgot their manners I swear it, it, it's insane to me but the quiet place franchise has still been one of those that's like okay every time it plays it still feels quiet and I love that and day one looks to be hoping at least to give to that because I haven't seen the trailer I, I, I really don't want to see anything for this and I've heard that the trailer doesn't really show much this is also directed by the director who did Pig which if you never saw that Nicolas Cage movie it actually features one of Nicolas Cage's best performances it's a slower more somber film but if that director can influence this film with that same tone and same love and gratitude that he did for Pig can only imagine that he'll be able to do the same thing for A Quiet Place Day One now we get into my number eight which which is a film that I saw the teaser at the Super Bowl and it looked a lot of fun. And then I've just heard consistently great things about this film. It's also directed by a director that I highly loved his last movie. And that is Twisters. Now, I'm really just on a Glenn Powell mood. I love how this guy has been leading Hollywood. And one of my other picks for the summer of how excited I am just to see Glenn Powell in another film. But Twisters, while again haven't seen much from it yet 
We don't need to see much. And I know that this is technically a sequel to the original Twister, which I've actually never seen. I'm very excited to finally check it out. I know that's like a cult beloved movie that so many of you guys love. But Twister's, it's got a great cast. The director of Minari is doing this. And if you never saw Minari, I think that's one of like the best A24 films ever. Lee Chung Isaac is going to do an incredible job. I can only imagine with Twister's. And I'm excited to see how he told such a small story in Minari a film again about a family and one that's not intense not thrilling but keeps you intrigued the entire way through how is he going to be able to influence that and bring that same nuance that he knows how to bring into a film like Twisters where we're going to have to have that high octane summer blockbuster feel and there's a lot of aspects that Isaac is going to be able to bring into Twisters and I am so so excited for it again if you asked me at the start of this year, I would have never had Twisters even in my most anticipated films. But now that I've seen stuff, now that I've heard things from CinemaCon, it just sounds incredible and I can't wait to see what they pull off here. Now we get into my number seven and that is M. Night Shyamalan's brand new movie, Trap. This is a movie that... <sighs> I, I've been pretty excited for Josh Harnett stars in this and the whole basic concept is he takes his daughter to a concert and at this concert it's actually a giant trap for a SWAT team to capture a serial killer. Now it sucks that I didn't watch the trailer until about a couple days ago where I was in a position where I didn't really have a choice to watch it and I watched it and it was good. I liked it. There's a couple things in there that I wish they didn't spoil, but I'm hoping that those are actually early in the film and its ideas. I won't share it here in case you have not seen the movie. There's so many twists and theories that you can always have with an M. Night Shyamalan movie. And I know there's a lot of people out there who are just tired and over M. Night Shyamalan. For me, he still always remains like top 10 directors for me. Really hoping Trap can like nail another great M. Night Shyamalan film with a great twist, with great surprises, a lot of stuff that isn't just a little tad predictable, which I think some of his films have had lately. I love M. Night Shyamalan. I will always give him a chance. I might be burning my bridges with this one once again. Maybe I'll be disappointed, but Trap looks excellent, especially from that trailer. And I can't wait to see, hopefully, what is another good M. Night Shyamalan thriller. If not, maybe we'll have a good guilty pleasure film to talk about. Now we have at my number six, The Fall Guy. This is the first film that's going to actually kick off the summer movie season next week as I'm filming this video. And The Fall Guy looks just stupendous um ryan gosling emily blunt david leach directing it looks like a love letter to stuntmen it's about a stuntman who wants to get the girl but he also has to go save the guy actor he's supposed to be portraying played by aaron taylor johnson and yeah that just sells me like there's so much fun in the trailer there's so much fun action scenes and the thing that i really love is ryan gosling going into these action roles uh i know a lot of people didn't love the gray man last year I personally liked it. I guess it wasn't last year. I guess it was the year prior. Yeah, time flies. Ryan Gosling is one of those actors that you instantly are like, yeah, I'm going to watch whatever the hell you're in and I'm going to enjoy the shit out of it. And that's kind of what The Fall Guy is. It's one of those films that gets me excited, gets me hyped up and makes me excited to see what he is possibly going to be able to do next. And with The Fall Guy, looks like great action. Great casting all involved in here. Again, we've heard that now it's probably David Leach's best movie yet, which is saying a lot because I think he's actually made some quite great films. Some not so great, but also some great ones as well and always entertaining at the very least. And after him doing Bullet Train, which is a film that I really liked, I'm excited to see what he's going to be able to transfer within The Fall Guy. Getting into my top five and at my number five, it is Inside Out 2. Uh, the first Inside Out is just one of those like magical Pixar films that I watched and I instantly fell in love with. And I was so surprised by how incredible it was because it just kind of warmed my heart in every way. And somewhat broke it, especially with the whole bing bong subplot. And now with Inside Out 2, we're going into Riley's teenage years. We're adding new emotions such as anxiety and it looks delightful. Just like a lot of films I've mentioned on here, I have not watched the trailer and I've tried to stay away from trailers specifically for films that I do think will be shorter in its runtime like Inside Out 2. I just don't want to see too many of the gags. I want to go in with a lot of good surprises. And just from what I've heard, it seems like they're taking on 
the suppressing your emotions to a whole other level. And when you have a film like Inside Out 2 with a great concept like that, suppressing your emotions, your teenage emotions are kicking in. How is that going to influence you? How is that going to tell us a story? I hope it can do and tell the same story that Inside Out 1 did so brilliantly well, but in a new form. And I think with me, if this works, then you could potentially do a third one with Inside Out 3 telling Riley's adult emotions or maybe young adult emotions the second she goes for college. How does that play out? There are so many grand ideas that Pixar can continue to do in here. And I'm hoping again, I know not everyone has loved a lot of Pixar's films recently, but what I'm hoping is that they can kind of get back to that nuance of with Inside Out 2, they can have a good box office, but they can also strike a film that is not just made for younger viewers, but is made for adults to watch and for their younger viewers to enjoy as well. Just like the original Inside Out was, a hilarious and emotional ride, I think Inside Out 2 is gonna hopefully be the same way. My number four, we have Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, a film that I potentially am a little nervous about because it's not Matt Reeves coming back, but it is the same writers coming back from the last Planet of the Apes trilogy, which was just absolutely incredible. One of the best things of the last decade. Seriously enough, go watch my decade video. I talked about how Planet of the Apes just like blew me away, specifically Dawn, which I think is like the dark night of the Planet of the Apes franchise and apes on horses, apes with guns, apes talking, whatever you want to say it is. King of the Planet of the Apes. I can't wait for it. And this is actually, I always choose at least like one giant blockbuster to that scale to try and not watch anything for. And I haven't seen much for this film. I know it spans like it takes place 300 years after Caesar. That time jump is a little bit big for me, but I hopefully that means that like all the apes can talk and we can get, get to something else with that. But I don't know anything about this movie. And that's exciting. And from what I've talked to people who watch the trailer, it kind of seems the same way. It's a new start to hopefully what could be the next trilogy you have Wes Ball directing it who did a fairly good job with the Maze Runner films but he's also attached to the Legend of Zelda live action films now and if he got that job from probably good word of mouth in Hollywood of what he accomplished with Kino the Planet of the Apes then I think we're all going to be basically sold here and as you have the same writers it does lessen my worriness a little bit I'm so excited to see this I hope I go in fall in love with these new ape characters fall in love with what they're trying to tell me here and feel like it is really much a great stepping off point from where we were last in in this franchise. And my number three is Furiosa, a Mad Max story. Now, I am very excited for this. Mad Max Fury Road is one of my favorite movies of all time. I've been waiting for either just a new Mad Max film or this Furiosa prequel that George Miller has been toking up and talking about since Fury Road, and it's finally coming. It looks badass. It looks awesome. Anya Taylor-Joy looks phenomenal as Furiosa. Chris Hemsworth looks unrecognizable in here, and I love it. I'm all here for it. it the action looks bar none just like even better than fury road in some departments i know some people have been talking about like some of the visual effects but i i'm not going to complain about that i had those complaints when fury roads trailers came out then i saw the film and it was like completely an afterthought i think furiosa is going to nail exactly what we want and i think it's also going to shut up some of the naysayers of fury road i know there's a lot of people who enjoy fury road for what it is but a lot of people had issues with there not being really a story there and from what I'm getting and garnering from the trailers and just from what they've spoken about at CinemaCon is that Furiosa is more than just a giant car chase for two and a half hours. There seems to actually be more of a story here, specifically the time spanning that it does. And I think if I'm don't quote me on this, but from what I understand is George Miller talked about CinemaCon, how this film spans over like 20 years of Furiosa's life within the story and how many different chapters we have with her. And I think that's going to be an interesting tidbit to see here. Hopefully with that nuance, they'll be able to tell a very great story. I've never thought that the Mad Max films were like known for their story. I've always thought about it more for its world, its characters and its influences to what it needs to talk about. And again, Fury Road kind of gave me all that. So Furiosa can double down on that same nature of the Mad Max franchise franchise but also double down on what made fury road so fantastic but at the same time doing something a little bit different with the story i'm gonna be all in i'm so excited now we get up to my number two and my number two is another glenn powell film that maybe you've heard of and it should be going wide release but it's not it's gonna be limited theaters in may comes out in june on netflix and that is hitman 
Hitman premiered back, I think, at the Toronto International Film Festival or Venice last year, and it got great buzz. Then it went to Sundance this year. I sadly couldn't go this year. And again, another great buzz. I have not seen the trailer. I have not seen anything, just the poster. And the fact that my co-host on This Week in Geek, Ren Geekness, was like, Zach, you have to watch this. It looks epic. It looks awesome. I think you're going to love it. And uh, just every little thing I get excited about this movie, hearing about it. it's a hitman, it's Glenn Powell, it's Richard Linklater. Oh, so many great ideas, so many great things, and I'm just am over the moon excited for this movie. I had to mention it. I want to keep at least one film that maybe some of you guys won't be having in your top 10, but I absolutely think we need to go support Hitman as best as we can. And I will also say, if it is playing limited release by you in May, let's all go support the film. Let's show Netflix we want to see some of their movies in theaters, please. I finally just got done watching Anyone But You last night, and like while the film was enjoyable for what it is, Glenn Powell like stole the entire show. My number one movie I am the most excited for this summer season, you can probably guess from my shirt, Deadpool and Wolverine. Uh, this At this point, there's been two trailers released. I've watched them both. Um, I went into this pretty nervous, and just as a point of context, Logan is personally my favorite X-Men movie. It's also my second favorite comic book film of all time. And Deadpool is my number four favorite comic book film of all time. Deadpool 2, I liked, but definitely each viewing has dwindled my likeness for that movie in certain degrees. I think there's certain good aspects to there, but it's also just not as great as the first one. And it's been seven years of them trying to get a Deadpool 3 off the ground. And now they're saying that this isn't Deadpool 3, but this is Deadpool and Wolverine. It's a kind of a build-up film. And I think with having Sean Levy, a director that I was a little bit nervous coming into here because he's never done an R-rated film, I think from the trailers alone, it looks awesome. The action looks great. I love the humor. Sometimes the F word's thrown a little bit too much. Both trailers so far have been somewhat perfect. The first trailer really starts us off, shows us where Deadpool's at, shows us how he's coming into the MCU with the TVA, introducing that concept, not showing Wolverine until the very end, and that's it. The second trailer touches on what is going on with Wolverine, and this was the trailer that I actually needed. This was my most anticipated film of the year. Still is. And in fact, it still is, again, my most anticipated film for the summer. But the reason it is now is because I'm not as worried about what they're doing with Wolverine. I love that this Wolverine doesn't seem to be the one from Logan. I love that it seems to be a variant. My guess is that it is a variant of the last stand of like, what if he didn't kill Jean Grey on time and all the X-Men died? And then he kills her and he's just all left alone. I think there's so many theories and so many fun tidbits that we can play off in that. All the banter, all the chemistry between Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman already in the trailer was top tier. Specifically, they didn't even show much from the movie. Like in terms of surprises and excitement. And I love that. But what I saw in that trailer is exactly what I needed to see. I needed to see what they were doing with Logan. I needed to see what they were doing... I needed to see what they were doing with this version of Logan. I needed to see these characters bantering with one another. I needed to see the heart of Deadpool, and I definitely saw that. And I needed to see just a tidbit of what the story is going to be, and specifically the villain. And I got that. And that's it. I'm sold. I'm all in. I don't think I'm going to watch another trailer, but I'm saying that in my excitement it might get the best of me and tell me to watch it. But other than that, Deadpool and Wolverine looks to be everything that I wanted more. It looks so damn exciting. And I think for most people this summer, it hopes to be the comeback that the MCU personally needed. And maybe Deadpool really is marvel jesus so guys thank you so much again for watching this make sure to hit that like and subscribe button join our memberships down below for extra content extra videos for you guys and even some exclusive live streams you can check out all those different tiers down below maybe even some shout outs as i'm showing right here shout out to those channel members thank you so much again for watching and of course until next time stay classy